in chapter five, we learned how to draw things and we created this project here. It was our simple landscape plan. Open that up. I've saved a copy of what I did in the chapter six project folder and I called it chapter six project. So let's start with that or the one you made. Either one will be fine. In chapter five, we learned how to draw things. And in chapter six, we've learned how to edit those things that we've drawn. So now that we've drawn something, we're going to tweak it. We're going to clean it up, make it a little bit better. So first, what we want to do is erase all of these points. They're getting in the way and they're not really serving the purpose that we really want to do. So select everything in that area. Open up your properties palette by pressing control one if it's not open already. Now use your quick select option and let's select all of the points. We'll say their color equals by layer and click OK. So now all of the points are selected and press the delete key and we've deleted them. They're gone. They're out of our way now. Now let's go over here to our little pond that we created. Let's erase all of these hexagons except for one. Select them all and press delete. Now let's offset the pond with three units. Select it. See our preview and enter. Grab the hexagon with the move command. Grab the endpoint and let's use the near command to put it somewhere here on our new offset from our pool. Now what we're going to do is rotate it so that the vertices line up with the offset line. So zoom in, type in RO for rotate. Select the hexagon, press enter, type END for end because we're grabbing this end point. Now we don't know what angle that needs to be, so we need to reference this rotation. Type in the letter R, press enter, grab that end point again, type END, type END again because we want to grab this end point, and now type in near, NEA. Zoom in real close and find a spot that's there. It doesn't have to be exact in this case. Remember, type in REA for regen all so that you can see your arc better. Okay, we want to create a path array around the offset line to create a path of hexagon shaped stepping stones. Now let's see what we can do. Hit path array, select the object, press enter. Now we need to select the path. Well. Since this is an ellipse that's been offset, we're getting some weird functionality. I knew that was going to happen, but I wanted to show it to you anyway, because sometimes CAD does unexpected things. Now, this is what happened. This is an ellipse, and when you offset an ellipse, it's no longer an ellipse that's created, it's a spline. So a spline can do strange things. So what we're going to have to do in order to create this array is to create some other object that's going to work like a polyline. So start the polyline command, press enter. Now we're going to start from this point here. And we're just going to draw different shapes. Turn off your O snaps and then just draw somewhere around where this ellipse was. We don't have to be exact in this case, but if we did, we can use the near O snap to click onto different places along our ellipse. There are many times in CAD in which things don't work the way you expect them to, and so you have to improvise. And this is one of those cases. So now that we have this new polyline, we can array around it. Use the polar array command, select a shape, press enter, select our path, and now you can see we have something that's looking much better than what we had before. It's actually going around the pond this time. Now what do we want to do? Do we want to have a certain amount of items, or do we want to have a certain space between them? Well, let's divide it up to make it even, and let's make it an even 40 stones because that'll be an easier number to order. And do you want one or two rows? Let's just stick with the one. When we're done, close the array, 
select the path and delete it. And there you go. Now let's open up the wall where we have our door. Before we open up the wall, let's put a wall in here. Let's use the offset command. And let's tell it to go eight units. Say, well, that's too big for what we're doing here. Okay, let's change that to one. That looks much better. Now let's draw a line, snap to the endpoint of our door. Press enter. Now use the copy command. You copy this line. And you can turn your O snaps back on by pressing the F3 button or by clicking down here on the status line. Pick your endpoint, then an intersection point, and press enter. Now let's open up the wall by trimming. Select these two lines here, press enter, and there you go. So now we have a real door with a real doorway. Now, in the planting area here for our garden, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's use the fillet command and let's look for a distance of a radius of five units. Sometimes polylines won't allow you to fillet them, so you have to explode them first. Explode is a command we haven't talked about yet, but an explode command will separate things like a polyline. It will break it down into its basic components of lines and arcs. They won't be joined together anymore. Hit the letter X, press enter, or you can pick on this box up here in the modify panel. Select our polyline, press enter. Now let's do a fillet with a radius of five units. And let's do that again, but we'll have a radius of 20 units this time. And this will help us to smooth things out. And you can radius arcs as well as lines. And if you didn't like this one, we can do that in here and then delete. Now that has a much more fluid shape to it. And there you go. We cleaned up our drawing a little bit, added some new features, we've changed it. We've given the building a wall and we've put a door in it. And we can also trim our concrete driveway and sidewalk together. And so now you've created this drawing and then you've gone through and edited it with the new tools that you've just learned how to use.